This screencast is on accuracy, precision, rounding, and significant figures. There are important differences between these four items. Accuracy is how close the measured values are to the actual value. In this target analogy, the desired value is the center of the target, and the five holes are clustered around the center of the target representing accuracy. Precision, on the other hand, is how close the measured values are to each other. Here we have five holes clustered around each other representing precision in contrast to accuracy, which is the desired value of the center of the target. In our last target analogy, we have a representation of both accuracy and precision. The holes are clustered around the center of the desired value or the center of the target and the holes are clustered around each other which represents precision. Let's talk a bit about measuring numbers. On the left here we have a representation of a graduated cylinder. It's graduated in units of milliliters which is the same as cubic centimeters cc or can be abbreviated cm cubed, cubic centimeters. So this graduated cylinder is full of a red liquid and we measure it at the meniscus here, which is the bottom of the curve. And meniscus is just simply Greek for curve. And the graduations are in one milliliter units. And we go up here to 60, we can read 61, 62, and we need to estimate the tenth of a milliliter in between these graduation, in, in between the graduations. So when we read across the graduations here, we can read that this measurement is 61.6 milliliters. Let's take a look at the scale here on the right, or the ruler. On top, the yellow ruler here, and it's centimeters. And we have units here of whole centimeters, and then it has graduations of tenth of a centimeter. So we can measure this green box here to whole centimeters, tenth of the centimeter, which is the graduations, and we estimate between the last two graduations, and we are actually estimating as 10.00 centimeters. In addition here, we have a couple more examples. This is 12.70 centimeters in blue, where the blue arrow is right here. And in orange is 14.73 centimeters, where we measure 14.7. And in between the 0.7 and the 0.8, we estimate 3 hundredths of a centimeter, which is exactly right here. Exact numbers differ from measured numbers in that they are exact. An easy example for most people to visualize is 12 eggs. 12 eggs is exactly one dozen. You can't have partial eggs. Taking a look at the ruler we used previously, we can visualize one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. That's how it's defined. And then on the lower right here, we have a pile of carbon-12. And later in the class, you'll learn that one mole of pure carbon-12 has a mass of exactly 12 grams. And these 12 grams, by definition, contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And that's actually the definition of a mole. So one mole is 6.22, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 items. And that's actually how we define a mole and it's based on 12 grams of carbon 12. It's an exact number. Let's talk a bit about significant figures or S period, F period as the abbreviation. The number of digits that contribute to its 
precision is how significant figures are defined. On the left here we have eight numbers and they're divided into four colors and each color has two representations of the same number with the same number of significant digits. For example, five million can also be written as five decimal point times 10 to the six. If we go over here to the green numbers, 2.73 times 10 to the two is the same as 273. And there's a couple of other examples here. And there are rules for determining significant figures. Let's talk about them briefly. The first rule is straightforward. Numbers without zero. Numbers without zeros are always significant. Here's some examples right here. In numbers without decimal points, the leading zeros are not significant. Here's some examples here. 045 only has two significant figures. And more importantly, trailing zeros are not significant. So a measurement of 1,000 grams has one significant figure. To make all these numbers significant, we would simply place a decimal point after that, and we'll see that in a moment. And then middle zeros are significant always. And there's some other examples here for you. In numbers with decimal points, the leading zeros, again, are not significant. So we have 0 0.0004 pounds, and it has one significant figure. However, trailing zeros are significant. Like the last example, 1,000, if we placed a decimal point after the 1,000, it have four significant figures. This number here, 50 decimal point, has two significant figures. And here's a couple of other examples, like 16.00 grams has four significant figures. And again, middle zeros are significant. And lastly, as we mentioned previously, in scientific notation, all numbers are significant. So if you want to express a number with the correct number of significant figures, you can always resort to scientific notation. For example, the number 1000 could be expressed as 1 1.000, which has four significant figures, and you could also write it as 1000 and place a decimal point there. Let's talk about rounding of numbers. Uh, rounding of numbers is important uh, when calculating answers. Normally you make a measurement in some value and then you make a calculation after the measurement. The measurement determines the number of significant figures and then we round the final answer based on asymmetric rounding rules. They are very straightforward. It says that when the following digit is four or less, this is how we apply the rounding. And when the following digit is five or greater, this is how we apply the answer. We round up versus we don't round at all. And the following digit is simply the uh, significant uh, number we're rounding to. Applying rounding during addition and subtraction is slightly more complex. The rule for that is the answer's significant digits are determined from the measurement having the largest placeholder. You ask, what the heck's a placeholder? These are placeholders. This is a number line. This number five is in the thousandth placeholder. This is the four. The four is in the hundredth placeholder. The zero in the tenths and then the two is in the ones placeholder, and then we go up to three, and this in the tens. So we look for the largest placeholder. And this is the number that has the largest placeholder. And it can also be interpreted as the number of the smallest number of decimal places. So 34.1 controls the number of significant figures. When we add these numbers together, we get this on a calculator, and our significant figure answer is this, 36.1. Here's a couple other examples. Note, the largest placeholder here is 255. The ones are the largest placeholder, and that's where the significant figure answer is. And this one here, the largest placeholder is the same. It's the 10th, and that's where we set the zero as a placeholder 
with a significant figure answer result. Applying rounding during multiplication and division is less complex. It's just the number with the fewest significant figures determining the significant figure answer. There's a couple of examples here for you. That concludes this screencast. Thank you for watching.